Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us on day two of the KL Startup Summit 2021. Um, my name is Serene, I'm the Community Executive here from Howard School and I'm your MC of today for the EdTech track. So how is everyone doing on this beautiful Sunday morning? <laughs> is, how's the weather there? And from okay, maybe do a little bit of introduction. Um, so forward school, we are here uh, in Penang. It's a bit cloudy, so do let us know um, where you're from and how to live there. Morning. <laughs> Okay, um, I know it's a bit early for some of you guys, but do bear with us because we have a great lineup of uh, speakers from both Malaysia and Singapore. We also have a VC that will be joining us here to talk about the investment in EdTech. So before we get started, I would like to thank Pixel Lab for organizing the KL Startup Summit in partnership with Microsoft here through AirMeet. Um, we're honored to be able to lead the asset track here today. And Bowen School is a revolutionary new technology and future skills school based in Penang that will equip uh, aspiring tech professionals uh, with industry ready skills that is required for the fast moving tech sector. So, um, I think in this special times, uh, 2020 has been a very interesting year for everyone, especially for students. Yeah, it has changed the way that we uh, as individuals, especially for um, students who are in school and the learning experience itself. So in EdTech, uh, he has pushed uh, digitization much faster than the government can ever enforce. So in the EdTech track here today, we'll be reaching out to different EdTech startups, touching on their journey, as well as how EdTech can help make learning more accessible for everyone. Okay, so... Um, I'll be introducing our first speaker here for today, Howie. So Howie is founder and CEO of Forward School. And at Forward, he leads the growth and development for the company with the goal to build sustainable talent pipelines for businesses. Having spent um, formative years of his career in Singapore, he has long experience of, of product management user experience and digital business transformation in various industries. So today, Howie will be sharing on um, who's who and what's next in EdTech. So I'll pass the stage to Howie. Hi, hi uh, everyone. I just wanted to make sure that you can hear me uh, loud and clear. Uh, if you can hear me loud and clear, please uh, say yes or, you know, uh, say good morning. Uh, great. Uh, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and uh, thanks, uh, Serene, for the uh, intro introduction. Uh, yes, it's uh, quite a morning in in a, in on a on a Sunday, uh, but I'm I'm excited uh, to be to be here. I hope that my uh, sharing in one way or another uh, will help you. I will give you uh, a bit of an insight into. Uh, the developments of EdTech in Southeast Asia. Uh, so good morning and uh, welcome to everyone to the EdTech track of a KL Startup Summit 2021. Uh, my name is Howie and I'm the CEO and founder of Forward School. Uh, first of all, I would like to kind of really thank the organizer for the partnership that made this EdTech track possible. Uh, secondly, I would like to thank our capable a uh, lineup of uh, speakers uh, that we will be introducing later on. Uh, Jack So, founder of uh, Kappa, who will be sharing his experiences on you know building and scaling an ag tech company. Uh, and we will also be introducing Brian Tan, right, founder of uh, Future Lab, uh, who will give us insights uh, behind the scenes on the challenges of building uh, an ag tech startup. And then we will also have Raymond Hall, who is the venture partner of uh, Kajora Capital and director of Sunsea Capital, where he will be sharing uh, on investing in the ad tech space. And last but not least, uh, Manu Menon, who is the founder of uh, Utopia, 
who will be sharing with us the future of classrooms. Uh, I trust that you will gain valuable insights and learnings uh, from our speakers uh, today. Uh, as for me, I'm going to be sharing on who's who and what's next in EdTech. And uh, similarly, I trust that my sharing uh, will give you some insights and learnings. Uh, just to start, right, uh, as we all know, we all live in Southeast Asia and Southeast Asia uh, is part of uh, ASEAN. And ASEAN has actually 10 member states, uh, which is Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, uh, Singapore, Thailand, Brunei, Laos, Myanmar, Cambodia, uh, Vietnam, uh, with Papua New Guinea and Timor Leste as observers. I bet some of y'all do not know that, right? So the collective population from member states uh, are now over 620 million. Uh, people. Uh, that's nearly 10% of the uh, world's uh, population, uh, with 210 million under the age of 30. Now, why am I sharing this? I'm sharing this because this uh, presents us with massive opportunities in the digital economy, and it is no surprise that the industry experts uh, have earmarked uh, education tag or ad tag for short uh, as another exciting area of growth. And that's where Forward School is at as well. Uh, in Penang, Malaysia, uh, we see that the manufacture for export strategy has grown uh, rapidly, right, uh, over the past two decades and continues to grow with the implementation of a fourth. 4IR, right, 4th Industrial Revolution, or people call it Industry 4.0 Technologies. This too is a reflection of ASEAN as a whole, uh, in terms of strategy in general. Uh, having said that, uh, we can see that, you know, we have yet to hold out substantial uh, education uh, policies, uh, thanks in part uh, to funding gaps. Um, according to uh, EMRO, uh, Chief Economist Dr. Koho, he said, all the existing policies right, are geared towards Industry 3.0. We need to invest more in education and encourage the development of more valuable skill sets, critical thinking and lifelong learning if we are to succeed in this new digital economy. So I fully concur and uh, agree that this presents us massive opportunities in ad tech. In fact, the sector has seen surge in interest, uh, heightened even further by the COVID-19 pandemic that we are experiencing uh, right now. Uh, the global ad tech space right, uh, generated revenues of over 76.4 billion in 2019 alone, uh, with an expected uh, CAGR of 18.1% from uh, last year, 2020, to 2027. Now, according to Hello IQ, which is a research platform, uh, states that Southeast Asia ad tech has seen nearly 480 million US dollars of venture capital in over 200 individual investments over the last five years. And we are just getting started. I'm going to show you uh, a slide. I'm going to share um, a slide by Hello IQ. Just uh, give me a minute. Okay, if you can see my screen uh, again, say a yes. The very uh, okay, great. Okay, so what we can see here is basically in June 2020, Hello IQ actually announced their first annual Southeast Asia at Tech 50. Uh, it is a list of the 50 most innovative education technology companies across Southeast Asia. The Hello IQ Southeast Asia at Tech 50 is drawn uh, from a broad ASEAN uh, focused cohort of new players, right? Uh, rapidly gaining the attention of students, parents, policymakers, 
uh, and investors alike. Uh, and these companies spans, you know, across uh, the category that you see here, uh, which is like upskilling, language learning, uh, learner support. You know, uh, you also have learning management systems in there, uh, STEM and coding, um, financing, uh, skills verification, and 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 more uh, that had made it onto the Hello IQ 2020 Southeast Asia Attack 50. Uh, Caught my eye, Elias was saying is that I uh, couldn't see any Malaysian startup. Uh, there is actually one, and that's Future Lab. Uh, Future Lab is actually under the skills and jobs uh, uh, category. And in fact, uh, Brian Tan, the founder, is going to be uh, joining us today uh, in a later keynote. He's going to be giving a keynote, right, uh, to share with us his challenges of building an ad tech uh, company. Okay, so besides that, both uh, Kalfa and Utopia, the startups that uh, is going to be joining us later as well, uh, belong in the same skills and jobs uh, category. Uh, while, you know, Forward School is actually in both the higher education and the skills and jobs uh, category. So Southeast Asia really, you know, for one, provides many opportunities for startups. Um, and in the space, as, as the region faces many education-related drawbacks, uh, we can kind of really experience this uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, right? Uh, at this very moment when schools are forced to go online. And we can kind of really see how inadequate uh, we are, you know? Uh, and not just that, you know, uh, it, it makes it um, uh, worse in, in a way that uh, such as uh, a lack of trained teachers, for example, uh, that is, you know, savvy online and the tools and inadequate funding for schools, for example, and the inconsistent quality of teaching across institutions. Now, I'm not kind of really uh, saying uh, uh, it is only true for the public institutions, public education institutions. Uh, I, I believe that it is also true for private um, education institutions. And existing players include, you know, Rang Guru from Indonesia and Zinius from Indonesia, uh, which both utilize uh, online platforms, right? So students can access videos and assessments on different topics. Uh, elsewhere uh, in Thailand, for example, like Tham Kru, and our very own Utopia, you'll be hearing from uh, the founder later, where they uh, uses gamification to teach. with the population rising affluent in Southeast Asia, many uh, parents in the in the region are uh, also willing to invest their uh, children's schooling. And EdTech has plenty of potential to enhance the learning process. Uh, such platforms can also uh, more or less help. Uh, address some of the uh, drawbacks uh, or rather I would say inadequacies that I've mentioned earlier in education by uh, enabling children, especially from the uh, underserved communities, right, to access educational resources more affordably. Uh, for Forward School, our mission is to make quality tech education accessible to all across Board. But EdTech isn't just for uh, school age children, right? Uh, there are also great opportunities in adult education. Again, uh, that's where Forward School is, is, is in. Uh, companies like, uh, 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 for example, Indonesia's uh, uh, Haraku Edu, right? Or Vietnam's Topika or Yola, uh, for instance, uh, they provide online courses and certifications for adult learners looking to upskill themselves. Uh, again, this is also forward school's positioning. Uh, we consider ourselves an aspiring challenger university. And our term, I would like to kind of really introduce to everyone. It's a rather new term uh, coined uh, by Emerge Education. They are a VC uh, in the UK. Um, and we believe that many existing universities will continue to be important pillars of society. But 
you know, they are ripe opportunities for a new generation of highly uh, innovative entrants uh, to play a key role, taking higher education to the next level. And that's where we and the rest of the startups in the region, some of the startups under the higher education category, are taking our place and position in. Now, let me share another slide uh, which shows you, you know, earlier I was talking about being a challenger university. And, uh, and this is a slide that shows the difference between uh, a, a challenger university or not a challenger university. For example, like Forward School, we see ourselves as a challenger university uh, because we focus on full length uh, accreditation program. We have a two years program in applied software engineering and our take towards independence in terms of platform as well as uh, innovation uh, is different as well. So I hope this slide is, you know, help for you to differentiate, right, between uh, a challenger university and uh, not a challenger university. Because if you look across board in the region, uh, there are actually a lot of bootcamp schools. Now, what I mean by bootcamp schools, bootcamp schools in general, uh, they belong to the skills um, and upskillings uh, category uh, and, and, and job uh, placements category, uh, but they are not a uh, challenger to the university in a sense because a lot of what they focus on are short courses, maximum being three to six months. All right, so this is what a challenger uh, university uh, is, and uh, I must say that there are very few industries in the world that are like higher education. Uh, according to, again, Emerged uh, Education, uh, it has a steady info of up to 50 million customers each year globally, uh, an active base of 200 million customers, and an estimated revenues of 2 trillion. It is a huge and resilient market that is ripe for more innovative solutions to take it to the next level it has been counter cynical to 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 recessions you know uh the, the the industry itself and while they will be you know short-term uh hiccups or challenges uh during a uh, covid 19 period right a lot of uh universities in the sense that they cannot kind of really enroll foreign students for example uh they have to uh uh, uh transition to fully online and they are grappling with it. But the majority of the industry uh, is likely to eventually uh, weather the storm and in parallel, higher education is expecting to have an additional 200 million new customers in the next uh, 10 years. I'm going to go a bit uh, faster because time is catching up with me. Uh, this is a picture of the university landscape that we are talking about. Uh, again, this is by Merge Education. For forward school, you know, we see uh, ourselves as part of the uh, as part of the challenges uh, 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 quadrant, and then you have the innovators here. But in this picture, by and large, it's uh, also categorized by campus first or online first. So for us, uh, we are hybrid. We are both a campus and an online uh, school, and you can see that forty two KL is also here, right? Uh, there's forty two KL. Um, in KL, Malaysia, uh, I think they, they, they started uh, last year. Uh, and you have Hyper Island and you have Minerva and so on and so forth. All right. So let me show another slide. Um, um, besides the higher education category, uh, there are a lot more opportunities within this category itself. Uh, there are many subcategories. As you can see, uh, generally there's four. There's the course uh, co-creation and co-delivery category. There's the experiential learning. There's the education as a work benefit. And then there's the career navigation and application support. At this point in time, uh, majority of startups uh, in the region or globally are focusing 
more in the cost co-creation and co-delivery category. And besides higher education, and I'm going to end with this, right? Uh, another exciting area of growth is actually workplace development. And uh, let me show you a slide, right? So uh, I'm particularly interested in the workplace uh, uh, development, uh, the growth of it. And according to a report, right, the workforce development market is large, open. And uh, similarly, like the entire ad tech sector is ripe for evolution, uh, where big learning management system providers once uh, dominate. You know, I'm sure you have used Blackboard and all that before, and that's just one, right? Uh, we are now seeing a wave of new and more agile players emerging to meet the growing needs of employers and offering innovative uh, solutions such as in the area of assessments, in the area of performance management, and in the areas of talent marketplace platforms. Uh, this shows exciting opportunity for technology to drive change, uh, particularly in the world of startups, particularly in Southeast Asia. And here we can see that there are generally four main areas, um, and they are the tailored learning providers, and then there are the skills assessors, and then there are the applied collaborative platforms, and then last but not least, uh, there are the career pathway navigators, uh, which Forward School eventually will be uh, going into as well. So all in all, EdTech is an emergent growth sector throughout this region uh, with its high internet penetration rate. Uh, I look forward to tremendous growth opportunities uh, in this sector. And I hope my sharing today, right, uh, will give you an insight into the who's who and what's next, in my opinion, in ad tech. Uh, with this, uh, let's uh, now turn our attention to the rest of the keynotes today. And of course, not forgetting our panel, which I will be a moderator. Uh, so do continue to join us for the rest of the day as we hear from the rest. Uh, over to you, Serene. Okay, thank you, Howie, for the interesting sharing. Um, okay, so one of our participants, Beryl, actually asked if it's possible to get a copy of the slide. Um, so, uh, Beryl, we have actually linked you to Howie's uh, LinkedIn in the chat itself. So you can click Howie, and Howie will be sharing with you on the slide. Yeah, do, and if do, you connect, yeah do connect with me, uh, and yeah, and enroll, enroll in one of our courses, and I'll give you the <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Look, look forward connecting with. You. Yeah. So, uh, if you guys have any other questions for Howie, um, do connect with him on LinkedIn. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Howie. I'll see you later for the panel discussion. All right.